Hi everyone, I am Cornelius of Voice Studio East, and this is the eighth installment of the Singing Demystified video series. Last time we got started on the topic of vocal registers, and now the subsequent videos in the series will go over them one at a time. Today's topic is chest register, which is the lowest of the seven registers in my system, and the one most commonly used for speech. When used for singing, it sounds like this. Proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. Believe me, bad as I've been, ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. Chest register has a characteristically focused timbre that becomes brassy or even buzzing at louder volumes. While it can be made quite dark, it cannot be made spacious or yawny as this will remove the characteristic shuntedness which is a defining feature of this register. Beginners usually have no trouble finding the chest register, but it may have certain coordination problems, hindering it from being efficient and from achieving a wide dynamic range. Perhaps it will sound something like this. Proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. Believe me, bad as I've been, ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. Here, the vowels are a little bit muddy, and there's a certain compressed or driven quality that generally tends towards mixed voice. To avoid this, it helps to really stress the speech-like character of chest register, making sure you're not actively trying to shape the tone or control the dynamics too tightly, but just loosely singing using your speaking voice. Proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. Believe me, bad as I've been, ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. Now, this may sound unmusical at first, but just by adding legato, that is, tying the notes together, more animated facial expressions, and a bit of vibrato, we can turn it into this. Proud of your boy, I'll make you proud of your boy. Believe me, bad as I've been, ma, you're in for a pleasant surprise. Thus, it is not the least bit necessary to change the essential character of the sound in order to make it musically useful to add warmth and so on. If you are struggling to get rid of the driven or compressed quality, you can try inhaling into a dramatically upright posture with an elevated sternum and the head held high. From here, hold your breath, but with an open glottis. That is, keep the airway open. Don't close it as normal when holding your breath. Not like this, but instead keeping the airway open as if you've been frozen in the middle of an inhalation. Try holding the position for a bit, just to get familiar with the sensation, and then produce a crisp, clean glottal onset into a sustained note. Ah. The onset should neither be forceful like this, ah, nor furtive like this. Ah. It should instead have a quality of minimalism, coupled with a sense that the closing of the folds in preparation for the note, the build-up of subglottic pressure, and the release into a glottal onset all happen in a single instant, like we just switch from the held breath to a sustained note with only a little click to separate the two. Ah. It may be helpful to combine the onset with a loose gesture that begins as suddenly as the note does. Ah. If you find your posture becoming guarded and overly rigid, it may be helpful to go in the opposite direction at first and try to simply collapse the posture with a sigh and then begin the note from the resulting position without inhaling first. Ah. If all goes well, you should have found an efficient chest register with a clear, sharp tone that doesn't require much effort to produce, at least in this range. This can be very useful for getting rid of pressing, reducing pharyngeal narrowing, and getting a fuller contact between the vocal folds, making it very useful as a means to get out of a squeezing spiral. If you don't know what a squeezing spiral is, you can check the description for a video on that topic. But just to summarize, P 
people sometimes get stuck in a mixed voice that becomes gradually thinner until it sounds all frail and weak and feels uncomfortably squeezed. In particular, this tends to happen if you take mixed voice low in pitch without decreasing the volume. To avoid this, it is important to have a well-developed chest register to return to for lower notes. It may also be helpful to look for points in the song suitable for collapsing, so to speak, into chest register. In particular, low notes using open, fairly bright vowels like a, e, and e. That brings us to the topic of vowels in chest register. As mentioned in the previous video, chest register allows for a clearer enunciation than is possible in any other register, and that means there are hardly any constraints on what vowels we can produce. However, the sharpness characteristic of chest register comes from a particular type of twang that does place some constraints on how we shape the vowels. This twang is not a baby-like whining sound, but is produced lower in the throat and is more akin to a snarl. Ah! In speech, it sounds blaring and abrasive like this, not childlike like this. To produce this kind of twang, we need vowels that have a bright, forward quality, though the overall tone can still be darkened, for example by lowering the larynx. That brightness of the vowels can most easily be achieved by widening the tongue. You should feel the sides of the tongue move up and to the side, making contact with the molars. It is not necessary to use a lot of effort here. No need to feel like you're trying to press the molars outwards or some such. Just a gentle, easy movement will do. If you do this and start talking loudly, you should hear some of that blaring quality come into your speaking voice. When singing in this quality, it is very important that you do not restrain its tone or be overly self-conscious about it, as this will take out the essential brightness from the vowels and tend in the direction of mixed voice. This becomes especially important as you ascend in pitch. It may seem like this vocal quality is limited to the third octave and in particular cannot go past E4, but if you really are very precise with your enunciation and make sure to keep this brightness in the sound, you should be able to take this quality up to around G4 or A4. In the beginning though, I strongly recommend focusing on the third octave when practicing chest register. Close vowels like E and U are possible in chest register, but as you ascend in pitch, certain limitations will come into play. Specifically, it will become increasingly necessary to raise the larynx or else modify the vowels into E and U respectively. There is thus a trade-off between diction and warmth here. It won't be easy. You'll think it's strange when I try to explain how I feel. As opposed to this version. It won't be easy. You'll think it's strange when I try to explain how I feel. Even if you are singing a genre that calls for a high larynx more or less all the time, I recommend still practicing these modifications just to give you that extra bit of wiggle room in case you ever need it. Notice also how much mouth movement there is. In particular, back vowels like O and U will require a lot of protrusion and rounding of the lips, so as to keep the tongue in a more fronted position. Also, as this demonstration showed, it is possible to produce chest register at a rather soft volume. In fact, it is possible to sing much more softly in chest register than even this. The key is to keep that piercing, focused quality to the vowels, even if the volume is insufficient for it to manifest as a buzzing timbre. Doing so is a bit tricky because it requires the same energetic, active articulation we use for singing loudly in chest register, but with much less subglottic pressure. In effect, we require a much higher level of energy in the vocal tract compared to the core musculature. To achieve this, it helps to relax the posture into a slight hunch. You can then try producing a warm, bright, sighing quality like this. Ha! Being sure to keep the vowel bright with a wide tongue shape as previously discussed. 
Then to sing in this quality, make sure your singing is boldly confident, even fearless, despite being relaxed at the same time. Please forgive me if I seem naive. I would never want to force your hand. But please understand, I'd be good for you. I'd be surprisingly good for you. If you've gotten the hang of both the loud and soft versions of chest register, you can try this exercise as a way of further refining your skills. First, do a clean, crisp glottal onset into a sustained hum around B3 or so. Mm. Then, just as suddenly as the onset, add a buzzing quality. Mm. Now, open your mouth to produce an R vowel with a little bit of the nasality allowed to remain. Mm. Now there's your pop chest register. The nasality makes the tone a little bit smoother and more suitable for boy band-esque singing like this. I never wanna hear you say I want it that way. From here, you can add a fourth step consisting of increasing the volume while lowering the larynx and removing the nasality. Mm and there you have a more dramatic sounding chest register, suitable for musical theater or classical music. Once you've gotten the hang of this, you can try a version where you skip the hum, going immediately for a soft ah, and add the buzzing quality gradually, like this. Ah. It is up to you to decide when to remove the nasality, or if you even want it in there at all, even in the beginning. The most important thing when practicing this exercise is that the onset is kept minimalistic and as instantaneous as possible, so as to go into a soft chest register right away, instead of mixed voice. Practicing this exercise is a great way of expanding your range in chest register. And with that, we've reached the end of this episode. If you have any questions, whether about chest register or about anything else, be sure to leave a comment below. Remember to like and subscribe for more content, and as always, thanks for watching.